Hi everybody, Charles Hoskinson here. Let's talk about how we're going to fix Twitter today. So this is a video to Jack and the Twitter guys, and it's basically a proposal and um, also a plea for help. So I'd like, if we can't do it, somebody to do this, and I'm prepared to do this whole thing for cost, if you guys would like. Okay, so what is the problem that Twitter faces? Twitter is a great platform, but it has an issue behind authentication and verification. Basically, people who aren't Donald Trump or Elon Musk or Bill Gates or Barack Obama or whoever gets compromised this week or impersonated are having trouble with the fact that people are pretending to be them in order to cause all kinds of havoc and chicanery. And that can be to manipulate market prices, Bitcoin giveaway scams, whatever have you, there's an authentication and verification problem. Now, in proposing a solution for this problem, there's some basic principles. One, don't change much. Twitter works, it's great. So don't make radical changes. Two, keep it simple. and easy to understand, easy to understand. Users have to be able to understand stuff. Okay, three, build on solid foundations. And four, no business model changes. So when we talk about changing much this is ui ux user experience user interface stuff you don't really want to radically change a formula that works and you don't really want to change your business model right and of course finally cheap and easy to maintain so you've just had your biggest security hack in the history of the platform everybody breathing down your neck wondering how many millions and millions of dollars are we going to have to spend and how many sacrifices are we going to have to make to solve the problem? Uh, and it turns out, well, not really that much. It's going to be cheap. You're not going to have to change much in your UI. You're going to keep it simple and people are actually going to be able to understand it. You're going to build on solid foundations, no business model changes. Okay, let's talk about it. So how are we going to solve this? Well, first we need some foundations. One is the signature. So a signature is an artifact of cryptography. And you have different types of crypto and so forth. But for our purposes, we have something called public key crypto. And the basic idea is that you have two objects. One is called a public key. And then the other is called a private key. This has been around since the 1970s. It's been around for a very long time, public key crypto. And it's the basis for how security works on the internet. We have many standards that live here. Okay. A signature is where somebody takes a message. We'll call that message M. And then what they do is they sign it with a special function, mathematical function, using their private key. And that creates a signed message. We'll call that M signed. Okay. Then anyone can verify that M signed is real. It's a legitimate message by just taking the public key. And it's either going to return true or false. It's basically mathematically what we do when we talk about a signature. Well, this has been around for a very long time. We use it to sign legal documents, use it to sign emails, and it has this beautiful property called non-reputability. So once 
uh, you have verified that a keys indeed belongs to a person, then you can use a signature to basically sign with any anything you want, any document you want, any message you want, and then people are able to verify that that message is right, assuming that that public key belongs to the person. Okay, so that's a great foundation to sit on, and here's what we can do. It turns out that there's a new standard called the DID standard. It comes from the W3C, and I got it right here. So if you go to w3c.org, these are the guys who standardize HTML and CSS and all those things you see on your screen. And they have a DID working group, and it's been around for a very long time, since I think like 2013, 2014. And uh, DID is basically a way of handling identity online that includes public and private keys. And there's even a foundation behind it, DIF, the Digital Identity Foundation, which uses the DID. And look at all the members of this group, Microsoft, IBM, Hyperledger, Accenture, RSA. Those are some big companies. And of course, my company, Input Output. So there's lots of standards, and we're building this as a community and ecosystem. But basically, a DID has two parts. You have a DID ID, and you have a DID body, or a DID document, excuse me. The did ID is something very small. It's uh, an identifier of letters and numbers. You know? And the document is kind of like an HTML file. It has a structured set of information about the did. And that can include crypto, such as, lo and behold, your public key. Okay. So here is what I'm thinking. We have this amazing piece of technology, an artifact of mathematics and computer science, the signature, the public key crypto that's been around since the 1970s. And this is a science. There's thousands of papers published, tons of standards, lots of brilliant people woke up every day and figured this stuff out. So why don't we introduce the concept of the verified tweet? Okay, set up just the verified account. Let's introduce the concept of verified tweet. And how does that work? Well, you have a tweet go out. And then what you do is you hash something related to the tweet and then sign it with the user's private key. Okay. You can link the hash back to the tweet. Verifying the tweet hasn't been changed at all. You can sign with the private key. Right. And so from a GUI perspective, let's go through our list of requirements. We say it's got to be not changing much. Well, what would we be changing? You'd have now two tweets, a verified tweet, and then you'd have a regular tweet. Okay. They just cosmetically look different. One has a little check, the other one does not. So you just display tweets a little differently. So you're not really changing much. Is it easy to understand? Well, of course, just like that little blue check mark allows me to verify that that account belongs to Donald Trump, a verified tweet would allow me to verify that the person tweeting controls it. Is it built on solid foundations? Yes. Does it require to make any business changes? We'll get to that. Is it cheap and easy to maintain? We'll get to that too. And of course, we'd like it to be secure, right? That would be another business requirement. And secure against who? You. The issue with the Twitter hack is Twitter itself was hacked. So how about we implement 
this type of a solution without requiring Twitter much for that. And here's how we do it. Well, we need some way of registering a did. So in the account creation or for already created accounts, we put an extra little pane saying register and verify my did. You click that little thing. And either they can create a did there or import an existing one. And it goes to a whitelisted ID verifier. And that whitelisted ID verifier can be VeriSign. It can be a government entity, like uh, the same people issue your driver's license. Whoever is in the business of checking documents and verifying that I'm Charles Hoskinson or you're Bill Smith or Jack Dorsey, there's somebody there. And basically what they do is they take a look at the did, the did document, all the supporting evidence provided, and there's some template and standard, and we can figure that out with you guys with best practices, whatever it might be. There's even industry accepted principles and so forth. And at the end of the day, what they do is they sign with their key the did. Okay. And that gets sent back to Twitter. And then what Twitter will do is when they get that did, they'll sign it too. After it meets whatever standard they have. So you have a did with two signatures, one from the whitelisted authority and then the other from Twitter. The user cannot forge these signatures. They don't have those private keys, but the user does control the private key associated with that did. Great. Are we done yet? No. Then what we do is we take the did and we embed it in a blockchain. Okay. So for example, this can be the Cardano blockchain. And then what happens is you get three beautiful properties for that. One, choose orange. I'll use a thicker orange. One, you get timestamping. Two, you get auditability. And then three, you have immutability. When that did is embedded there, you have an ordering of events. So you know when it first came in and, and you can change it over time, but you, it's always there. Audit means that anybody can check it in the entire world. No one can restrict your ability to check that. And immutable means that nobody can change the record once it's there. Okay, these are the three core things that a blockchain will give you. This beautiful, open, always available infrastructure that's online 24-7, can't be turned off. And it gives you the ability to timestamp, the ability to be auditable, and the immutability that you need to know that no one can tinker with it a bit and change things on it. So then basically the user knows that the did that they're looking at with that associated document, Twitter says, yeah, this one we recognize. And yeah, the Twitter knows that that's right because a whitelisted agency, it could be a government, whoever it might be, uh, figured it out, signed it. So we actually have that whole thing. And you know what? Prism has lots of built-in great capabilities that would make this pretty easy to integrate on both sides for both providers. So we can do that. We even have a beautiful website. If you guys are curious, go to atalaprism.io and you can see demos and visions and case studies and a lot of information about the product and uh, so forth. And it's an open source framework that we're constructing for identity. Okay, going back here. So, Let's go back to what we want to accomplish. We'd like to have verified tweets. So in the account creation process, the user can either create or import a did. They can get their did verified and you know what? They can pay a fee for that because it does cost some money to do it. That fee would be paid to the ID verifier. Twitter can get a chunk of the action, but it makes it basically an economically self-sufficient activity. Once it goes through, there's a checklist 
the Twitter side, they can either just sign anything they get or have a standard for it, like maybe an additional level of checking if it's a particularly important person, like a president or something like that. And then suddenly we now have a credential that the user has that Twitter does not have. Twitter does not have the private key that's inside the did document. What does this mean? It means that if Twitter ever got hacked, somebody would be able to tweet from Donald Trump's account or Bill Gates's account or whoever got hacked's account, but they would not be able to produce verified tweets. The only thing they could send would be unverified tweets. You can even have a policy for high value users that they can only send verified tweets. They can't send anything else, meaning no one can tweet on their behalf, for example. Okay. Now you also, because of the power of the PRISM framework, if you use that, would then gain the ability over time to add more capabilities. For example, like threshold proofs. And these are things like, I'm over the age of 18 or 21, or I belong to this particular group, or I possess access to this idea. And we do this usually with zero knowledge cryptography, zero knowledge proofs. Like I own something, but I'm not going to show it to you, but I can prove that I actually have access to this idea or password or file or something like that. And those things can be tweeted to the general public. There's all kinds of cool crypto that you can add in once you have a primitive like this and it's built into the layer of your system. So the user themselves controls their identity. They control their did. And as a consequence, they can do verified tweets. Prism can also handle the cases of revocation. So what happens if you lose your phone? We can do stuff with that, and you just go back through the whitelisting process to go identify another did, and the credentials can be rotated. Twitter's in the driver's seat of what the platform considers to be legitimate. It's very easy to verify tweets because they just carry a little bit of extra metadata. It could be as simple as the hash of the tweet or perhaps something a little bit more elegant based on what the InfoSec guys say is necessary. And of course, we go back to our design goals. We'd like it to not change much, Verify tweets do that. We'd like to keep it simple. Oh, if it appears blue, it's great. If it's not blue, it's not verified. Okay, super simple for the user to understand. The signing can be automated and built into the phone. Like you can unlock the signing key with a fingerprint and it can be stored in a secure hardware enclave on the phone. Uh, Samsung Knox and others have these capabilities. There's do dozens of ways to make that very secure. We're building on a super solid foundations. I mean, building it on top of what these guys are thinking about. A lot of logos here, a lot of smart people here, a lot of great ideas. Okay, easy peasy. And this has been around for a while. Just some good ideas here. And 40 plus years of cryptography is pretty simple. Okay. Doesn't have to change your business model. You're outsourcing the verification and ID to trusted vendors in each jurisdiction that matters. So verified tweets are something that you can roll out. Is it cheap and easy to maintain? Well, of course. You're just basically saying, all right, well, we're not in the business of revocation or any of these other things. We're just uh, going to add an extra little thing. We had the blue check mark. Now we have the check mark plus plus. And is it secure? It can be made secure. And of course, I'll do this thing at cost if you guys want. We can sit down. You can even audit my financial statements to verify we're doing it at cost. It's going to be cheap to do, super easy to do. And it's something that probably can be done in a three to six months time horizon. The benefit to the end user is that when we see Trump or Bill Gates or Elon Musk tweeting, we now have the verified tweet to verify that that's an actually coming from them. No more giveaway scams. They die forever. No more impersonations. If Twitter itself gets hacked, doesn't matter. No one can actually compromise the account. As a happy coincidence of having crypto, you can also do shielded private messages. Okay. Why? Because if two people have DIDs, they can use the crypto inside the DIDs to establish a secure channel. Just like you do when you go to an e-commerce website and you have that little lock in the browser. Okay, so the magic of this means that you can pre-share keys that Twitter does not possess, but the two users do. So as a consequence, that means that you can have secure private communication. You can do perfect forward secrecy. You can do all kinds of really cool things in the platform uh, that will enable secure communication between uh, two parties and verified communication between two parties as well. But then Twitter can't see those messages. So even if the account got hacked, 
you'd still have a secure private messaging uh, between the parties. So that's another happy accident that you get from this type of a scheme. What else can you do? Well, you can also enhance access control. Because the user has a pre-registered private key, they can use a challenge response protocol for login. So basically they can sign something to prove that they are who they say they are to get access to the account alongside additional factors of authentication. So you can have three factor authentication. You can have a password, a hardware device or a pin code generator or SMS or whatever it is. And then also a challenge response because you have a registered private key, a registered public key, excuse me. Uh, the, uh, the DID is registered. Okay, so you can enhance access control, okay? You also can do multi-sig tweets. What the hell are those? Okay, so you may have recently saw Elon Musk. And Elon Musk said, hey, SEC stands for suck Elon's cock. Technically, he said S Elon C. But uh, we can kind of infer what happened there. Sometimes it might be better to have curated tweets. So instead of tweeting to Twitter, Elon would sign it, send it, and it goes to a pre-approved group that he would pick or Tesla would pick or whoever he wanted to, basically a group that Elon decides and then they get that tweet and then they sign it as well in order for it to be broadcast and released. Very simple change, slightly different business model, but it's something that this model builds up to. So when you get that verified tweet, you now have M of N signatures on it as well. Now, why is this important? Let's say you are a major media outlet. Let's say that you are Apple. Let's say that you are the White House. You are some entity where communications matter. It's probably good not to unilaterally give a single person control over the release of that communication. By having chains of signatures before it gets approved, basically the Twitter platform can now have that extra added layer of security and curation. So even if Elon gets compromised and his private key was compromised, that group that he selected probably wouldn't be. So it dramat dramatically increases the security and there's really not much more uh, to ask for on the usability. It just goes to a second stage. So that's another thing that you can do with this framework, okay? So going back to it, what is our goal? Our goal is to make Twitter better why? Because Twitter is being used by the world and people can start wars with it, crash markets with it. And in my particular industry, we're suffering a lot of giveaway scams and impersonation, and it's hurting a lot of people. Millions of dollars have been stolen. It's not a joke. It's not a game. It's sad. And it's hurting the least technical and most vulnerable amongst us, and it has to stop. It shows that the bigger you get as a company, the harder it is to protect your users. And in some cases, you as a company shouldn't be unilaterally in control of things or else you run into a problem. So what did we do? We introduced the concept of a verified tweet. We based it on very old foundations from the 1970s, updated to a modern standard, which industry as a whole is working on. And we have a framework to do all this stuff called PRISM. And you can use very rapidly a whole constellation of verification entities you don't have to pay any money for it. The user covers that cost if they want to be verified. It's egalitarian. Anybody can do it. Easy peasy. You can add all kinds of checks and balances and signatures to this for certain very high value accounts before you approve a particular DID. You have the document. You have all this metadata that can be associated with them. We can add threshold proofs. You get auditability, timestamping, and immutability here. And if you're really concerned about uh, the stability of a particular blockchain, then you can, for redundancy, also put it on multiple blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum and say, okay, it has to be available on at least one of them and we can verify it once we see it. So you don't even have to put all your eggs in one basket. You can do multi-sig tweets with this. So you can now all of a sudden have curated tweets. So this gets rid of that sucky lens cock problem. 
And you can do secure private messaging with it as well. So people can actually use Twitter as a secure communication platform in the PM level between each other. And you can enhance access control for very high value users. How about that? Easy to do. I will do it at cost, Jack. You know where to find me. Send me a private message. I'm sorry you guys went through this, but you know what? Great companies always recover, and they recover through great ideas. And uh, we love working on things like this. If anyone else in the industry wants to do something you know, along these lines, make a video. Let's all make videos in this industry. Let's solve the problem. And then suddenly Twitter's been brought into the blockchain age. How about that? Maybe you can use Twitter as a payment system later on. By the way, with these foundations, a lot easier to integrate a cryptocurrency in a payment service. A lot easier to do a lot of stuff once you have these types of systems in. And it gives me as a user of the platform so much more security because I can have a verified account. Anyone who cares to have a verified account can have it. And then I have an additional credential that's easy for me to manage that tells my audience when I am actually tweeting versus not tweeting. And uh, we can just keep building from there. That's how solutions have to be done. You have to start with basic principles. Don't want to change too much because the model works. Build on solid foundations. Don't change the business model itself. And create something that's easy to maintain. And you know, Prism's great. If you guys want to learn more about private keys, learn by doing. There's a great service called Mailvelope. It's a Chrome extension. I personally use it. And you can use this to actually encrypt and decrypt emails through RSA. There's some tutorials here. Mailvelope is really, really cool. And uh, here is an example of my Mailvelope. So this is my key right here, uh, Charles.Hoskins and IOHK. That's the RSA fingerprint for it. And I routinely use this to encrypt, decrypt messages and sign messages when I send them to people. Uh, and uh, it's incredibly secure. Uh, and it's just really well thought out, well designed. Mailvelope's been around for, I think, over 10 years now. And this is a great way to onboard and get a better understanding of it. The user experience with Prism is even better, and perhaps we'll even build our own version of it one day. But for now, this is a wonderful onboarding mechanism to understand the intricacies of encrypting and decrypting and uh, using PGP, which is the oldest and most popular uh, email encryption service that exists. Okay, And the very same principles for this can be reapplied for verified tweets. Very easy to do, easy to understand. We can get crazy with the crypto and add all kinds of exotic crypto above and beyond what I've proposed. It's in our wheelhouse. We write these protocols for a living. And you know what, Twitter, if you guys contact us, want to do something, we'll bid it out at cost and sky's the limit. And we can have something done, demoed, ready in a few months if you want to. Hell, we'll work overtime and find the resource and, and give you a demo in six weeks if you want to. Uh, but that's up to you. I hope this uh, was helpful for everybody and they can kind of understand how things from the past can be modernized and brought into the future and allow people to solve what seem to be very hard problems in a very simple way. Put the user in control of verification, let them pay for it. You can use businesses that wake up every day whose day job is to do that well, uh, have increasing escalation based upon how serious the account happens to be. And then once those credentials are established, the user experience is super simple. People just see things with either a green, a green check mark next to them or there's a, they appear blue and it shows the tweets verified and so forth. And everything just kind of works. So I as a user know that I'm reading legitimate things and everything's fine. And phones are really good at managing credentials and computers are really good at managing credentials now. There's all kinds of great tools from uh, face scanning to biometric authentication to shielding. So those are passwords to decrypt the keys. And you can even use a combination of these things based upon how paranoid you have to be. And our system also happens to have an opinion on revocation, which also is quite easy to do when you have trusted whitelisting authorities and you have a blockchain component because you can show the progression of the keys. You can see old keys and new keys and so forth. Easy peasy. So Twitter, that's how you solve your problem. Industry, crypto industry, do the same. Let's get this solved and make it one of the great success stories of our time. Thanks for listening, everybody. And Jack, you know where to find me.